the Dorking Fi. About to marry and invest their lives in safety and routine, Stanley and June required a nest and came down on the 415. The agent drove them to the posh estate and showed them several habitations. None did. The afternoon got late with questions, doubts and explanations. Then day grew dim and Stan fatigued and disappointment raised its head. But June declared herself intrigued to know where that last turning led. It led to a Tudor snuggery styled Ye Comfy Nooklet on the gate. A gem of a home, the salesman smiled, my pet place on the whole estate. It's not quite finished, but you'll see good taste itself. They went inside. This little place is built to be a husband's joy, a housewife's pride. They saw the white convenient sink, the modernistic chimney piece. June gasped for joy. Stan gave a wink to say, well, here our quest can cease. The salesman purred he'd managed well, and June undid a cupboard door. For linen, she beamed, and out there fell a nameless something on the floor. Something the workman left, I expect, the agent said as it fell at his feet, nor knew that his chance of a sale was wrecked. Good heavens, it must be a joint of meat. Ah, yes, it was meat. It was meat all right, a joint those three will never forget, for they stood alone in the Surrey night with the severed thigh of a plump brunette. Early and late, early and late, traffic was jammed round the posh estate, and the papers were full of the dorking thigh, and who, and when, and where, and why. A trouser button was found in the mud. Who made it? Who wore it? Who lost it? Who knows? But no one found a trace of blood, or her body, or face, or the spoiler of those. He's acting a play in the common air, on which no curtain can ever come down. Though ye comfy nooklet was shifted elsewhere, June made Stan take a flat in town. <laughs>